Hello everyone, today for our short review we're going to go over another metaplastic breast cancer. Um, what I have for you today is a spindle cell uh, lesion of the breast and uh, we'll just start by driving around a little bit on this. Um, just to give you guys a, a general overview of what these tumors look like. So what we can see is we have a lot of spindle cells. If I go up to 10x and get you guys in focus here, um, we start seeing that we have uh, spindle cells that are, are somewhat ranged in, uh, it almost looks like a, a herringbone pattern here, um, with moderate to abundant amounts of slightly basophilic cytoplasm. Um, the cells themselves have somewhat fine chromatin. Uh, nucleoli aren't overly prominent, but there is some degree of nuclear pleomorphism, which is not uncommon in these tumors. Um, so things to to consider with these are they're relatively rare. Um, metaplastic lesions as a whole only account for 0.2 to about 5% of all invasive breast cancers. And if you're looking at um, purely mesenchymal tumors, then that number drops down to about 1% of all invasive breast cancers. So these are relatively rare. Um, the, the gross description of these tumors uh, can range wildly. Um, they tend to, to not necessarily be well circumscribed. If they're larger, they may have cystic degeneration. They may be hemorrhagic. Um, so pretty much there's no way to look at something that is a metaplastic carcinoma and know from the gross this is metaplastic. Okay? Um, we've gone over that the cells are, are atypical spindle cells. Um, this lesion, the pleomorphism, is present, but it's not necessarily like they're they're not really wild cells, right? Um, but you know, as we like to say, are they potatoes or gourds? And we have some potatoes and some gourds. Okay, so we have like a mixed salad going on in here a little bit. Um, what you can see with these lesions is if I drive around a little bit. This one's been around for a while. We have a little bit of hyalinization. Um, that, there we go. Uh, they tend to have chronic inflammation, okay? So if you're driving around these things and you see areas of lymphocytic focuses or dendritic cells, that's not uncommon with these. Um, you often will, will find that. And at this point you might be thinking, okay, well, um, can I see other things? Like what about the other metaplastic lesions? Like we can have squamous cell carcinomas that have spindle cell change if they're more poorly differentiated and when do we consider things that are um, like our malignant myelopithelioma or um, uh, and pretty much what you're looking at with these is one, if they, if the lesion itself looks epithelial or by your immunohistochemistry, try again, focus again, or your immunohistochemistry is leading towards epithelial differentiation. So that would be like your, your keratins, which we'll get into how those look, and I have some IHC to show you today. Uh, that helps you figure out um, that you're looking at more, more likely um, metaplastic spindle cell lesion over malignant myopithelioma. And the other thing that helps you is, um, although I didn't see it in, in this lesion, and this is where the IHC helps you, these lesions often will have uh, ductal carcinoma in situ or, or DCIS either mixed into the tumor itself or on the edges of the tumor. Um, so those are things that can kind of help you. In the sections received on this tumor, I did not appreciate like full-blown DCIS. Um, there was maybe one focus of ADH. Uh, so I, I wouldn't necessarily go that way on 
this tumor, but I think there's enough uh, morphology to at least get you thinking, hey, am I looking at, um, am I looking at a, a metaplastic lesion? So here maybe a little more pleomorphism. Um, but, um, and, and another thing is that, uh, and if I'm repeating myself, I apologize, but you can see multiple patterns with the spindle cells. So uh, don't be concerned if you have an area that looks more fascicular and areas that look more herringbone, or you have areas that are swirling. Um, that's not uncommon to see. Um, these tumors often are uh, hormone negative, so they're going to be ERPR negative, HER2 negative, um, but where they will help you are things like your, your keratin. So what I'm going to show you guys here, again, get in focus. So high molecular weight keratins will be positive in these tumors. So this is a CK903, also known as a 34 beta E12. Um, and you can see that like the the tumor is totally positive, um, and and beautifully so. And this is recapitulated in the other high mo molecular weight cytokeratin, so uh, CK56 or A1, A3. Uh, in this particular case, oh sorry, we're in a little out of focus. Um, in this particular case, the the A1 and three. A1A3, sorry, was uh, very focal, which can happen, um, but we have two other high molecular weight cytokeratins that are positive. Um, low molecular weight cytokeratins are negative in these tumors, okay? So that's something else we can consider. And uh, something else that'll help you that I also have here with me is your P63. Look at this, look how beautiful this is. Just diffuse positivity in these spindle cells. Um, so if you're uh, looking at like Floyd's tumors or, or other mesenchymal tumors, a lot of your IHC can really be beneficial in differentiating between all these. But okay, so if they're ERPR negative, HER2 negative, then that must mean they're basically a triple negative cancer, right? And even though they um, will often be classified as, as basal-like because of that, that's really not what's going on with these lesions. And they're probably better classified as clawed and low. Um, but, you know, that, that's a completely different issue. It's, it's not necessarily incorrect to look at them as a triple negative cancer. Uh, as far as your genetics, these lesions as a whole, we'll go back to the H and E so you guys can look at that while I talk over some of the genetics. Okay, these are just really amazing to look at. The different, the different patterns and uh, lesions like this always make me go, if someone didn't tell me I was in breast, I'm like, wow, crazy, right? Um, so anyway, back to genetics. Uh, a lot of metaplastic carcinomas, this being no exception, are often have TP53 mutations um, and often have amplification of EGFR. Okay, so we, we also see that in like the uh, squamous cell carcinomas of the breast. Um, things that you may or may not see would be things like uh, the loss of CDKN2A or P16. Uh, sometimes you can see loss of P10. Uh, and there may be aberrations of pic 3 ca or the WIMP pathways, so that's like your, your beta-catenins. Um, and the other thing to note with these is that where they do behave similar to the triple negative cancers is uh, they rarely have lymph node mets, okay? But they're sneaky, and like the triple negatives, they can present with metastases to either the lung or brain without nodal mets. Um, so if you have a case of these and, and you're like, well, you know, obviously there there's some sort of, of LVI somewhere that I'm not seeing and we're not seeing uh, node metastasis, but they have uh, multiple brain mets, 
um, that's something to keep in mind with these because that does happen uh, non frequently. Um, but because these are rare, right? We we mentioned like you know less than five percent of all invasive cancers. Um, what are the true prognostic implications of, of a tumor like this? Um, there's some suggestion that some of the metaplastic tumors like the adenosquames uh, might be have better prognosis. Like look at this, some of the cells just kind of pop out low power, so even at 10x you can see, okay, we got a little more pleomorphism. Um, but there, there's not a lot of data on these and uh, we've we've had a few of these come through lately, so it's it's just nice to be able to to review these for you guys. Um, so this is your uh, metaplastic carcinoma spindle cell type or spindle cell carcinoma of the breast. If you guys like this review, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, we get new content out to you every Monday. Uh, if you're interested in unknown sessions, we do an unknown session on Wednesdays, and those are usually posted Fridays for you guys. Um, if you have any suggestions, or comments, if I missed anything or made any mistakes, uh, please let me know in the comments. Um, if there's anything you'd like to see, you can either uh, mention something in the comments or you can head over to our Twitter account, which is also uh, KRO Slide Review. And uh, love to hear from you guys. And we'll see you next week with another case. Thank you.